We'll read tonight from Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. I suppose before I launch into things, it's, it's only fair to confirm what maybe some people already knew, and that is that at times I'm easily confused. I was listening to a commercial. Now, I'm, I'm one of the oddballs. I, I listen to commercials. I've written lots of them, and in this case, I knew what they were trying to do, but it was still confusing. Two sentences in, and I was lost. I, I, don't, I, I still don't know what the rest of I know what they're trying to, to sell, but I don't even know what the rest of it said because I quit listening after the second sentence. Here, here's what it said. First sentence. Listening to the news these days can be scary. And I'm, I know I'm sitting there and I'm saying, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. I thought maybe they're going to have a great suggestion. There's the next line. Experts recommend sanitizing your hands. What does that have to do with anything? I've been asking ever. I've listened to this three, four times now and still never got past the second sentence. I don't know what else they're talking about except hand sanitizer. I don't know how that helps. I don't know if you sanitize your hands. Let me know how that helps and works out for you. But as I, as I listened to that, I thought, you know, Scripture has a whole lot better idea. Why don't we just trust in the Lord? Yeah. You know, I mean, that seems, seems more sensible, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you give up trying to figure out what's going on in today's world. It's, it's a little too wacky. Just give it up and figure that somehow or another it's all under control and life is good. Trust is a, a hard thing to come by sometimes. I tell a story on one of my relatives on one side of the family or the other. Um, I, I don't know what her problem is, but she posted and let the world know that she was absolutely terrified. This is probably a couple of months ago now. She was absolutely terrified by everything that was going on. Yet don't, don't laugh too hard here now. Um, but she said that she, you know, she's, she scrubs her vegetables after she has them delivered from Costco, and they sit out in the air and dry for an hour to make sure, you know, there's no COVID on it. Somebody sent her a letter, and she takes all the mail in her, po in, in her garage because she doesn't want any of it in the house, and then she realized it was a letter and they possibly had licked the envelope and maybe even the stamp, and here she had touched it even though she had her mask and gloves on and says, I'm just scared I'm going to die. I, I told my wife, I don't even understand that kind of fear. I, I mean, I, I didn't even say anything back to her because I, I don't even know what to say. I just don't even understand that at all. But I do understand it comes if you don't have anything to trust in but yourself. But as I said, trust is hard to come by. For some of you that uh, are on Facebook all the time, or even most of the time, you may have noticed that uh, on my brother-in-law's page that he has, the Unvarnished Gospel, if you need more details, see me later, but that I've been doing a thing about the Jordan River. You know, we, we've, we've, well, we've traveled there as many times as we're going to travel there now. We'll move along. It's just something he asked me to do. I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't thinking about doing this or trying to start anything. He just said, would you contribute to my page? So I just kind of started in and got myself into a mess where I couldn't get back out. But I'd like to go back to the Jordan River again tonight because in 2 Kings 5, when it's talking about Naaman going down to the, to the river, the Jordan River, it's a, it's a beautiful illustration of how God helps us along and, and answers really the question that people ask us, how do you know you can trust God? 
How do you know that? Naaman was in a situation to begin with that we were all in. He lived in a land that was full of sin, it was full of idolatry, it was godless. When we were in sin, that's kind of us. We're living exactly in a, in, in a land, and, and, and all of our friends and all the people around us, we're just surrounded by sin. We're in, involved in it every day. And, and for some that maybe aren't raised in a Christian home, they're not even aware that that's what they're doing. But one day, just like everybody that has sin, he woke up and realized, I'm a leper, and this is, just isn't good. What do you do about it? Well, even if you're raised in, in, in the church, sometimes you ask yourself that question. You become to, to, the, to the recognition that, a recognition that you are a sinner and something has to be done about it, but what? Somebody told him he should go to church. Well, not really. They told him he needed to go see the man of God, but in those days that was church. He needed to go to church. If you go to church and hear what the man of God has to say, he can bring healing to you. I wonder if Naaman thought about that moment what my dad thought when somebody told him, Scotty, you need to go to church. He said, he used to testify sometimes, he said, I knew what would happen if I went to church. He said, I'd be arrested and thrown in jail because the whole building would come down. There's no, there's no reason for me to be in church. What's in church? But I'll tell you something. He found out that he had leprosy, and just like everybody that finds out that they've got the sin of leprosy in their heart, he began to be driven to do something. And he didn't go to a church service. He went to a service in a house, and he eventually ended up in a church service. But there's Naaman. Somebody tells him, you need to go see the man of God. Well, I'm sure that at that point, he's kind of got a whatever attitude about it. Because most of us, when we come to church, and we're sinners, and we're, we're there, and people say, you need to hear the Word of God, we're kind of a whatever attitude about it, because we're not sure what good it's going to do. He heard the man of God. Well, no, he didn't hear from the man of God, did he? I heard from what the scriptures call a messenger. Elisha didn't even step out to talk to him. Just sent a messenger out there. He said, you need to go down to Jordan and dip yourself in that river seven times. And immediately, Naaman's response was, behold, I thought. Told my wife, those are the most dangerous words in the human vocabulary when put together. Behold, I thought, because it's only the beginning of sorrows. That's why the scripture tells us that we shouldn't lean to our own understanding. Behold, I thought doesn't get us very far down the road. And there he stood. Well, somebody tried to talk some sense into him. You ever been in church and have somebody talk to you about getting saved? I don't know if, you, I don't know if any of you have had that experience or not. I was notorious for having that experience. After I got saved, I had somebody told, told me one time, they said, I talked to you. Now, understand, I'm only 13 years old when, they, when they're talking to me. He said, I, I talked to you about getting saved one time, and he said, that's the only time that I can remember spending my time talking to an ice wall. He said, you're about as cold as they get. I had somebody else tell me, they said, you know what, I, I, I came up to you and I talked to you about getting saved and, and I said I was going to pray for you. 
and you looked at me, and I probably said this too, unfortunately. I, the, he said, you, you looked straight in the eye and said, and what good do you think that's going to do? I had people talk to me, but I didn't have much trust in God. That didn't make any sense at all. I'm, I'm a, I can understand Naaman's problem. Go down to the river and dip seven times? That doesn't seem like a very good idea. Praying and asking God for forgiveness and humbling. They just, when they would say, you just need to humble yourself before God, that just rankled me. That made me so mad I refused to pray. I understand Naaman's problem. I just, I just didn't trust God. I thought there had to be a better way. I'm a, I, a Naaman. I, I'm with Naaman. How about if we use the rivers back home? No, oh, they're cleaner. There's got to be a better way than praying. But on the other hand, there came a moment where I joined Naaman. We looked at each other, we looked at ourselves, and Naaman discovered he was a leper. I discovered I had an inward problem, and something had to be done about it. Naaman goes to the river. And I've always wondered what Naaman thought. You know, he steps into the river. It's cold, it's muddy. There's nothing good about it. I don't know what he did. Is he tried to build up some trust in what God had just said? I mean, did he just stand there and splash water on himself and hope that this would work out? Or maybe if I splash water on myself seven times, that will count. Kind of dipped myself. That didn't work out, and maybe he decided that, you know what, I I I'll... I'll do it up to my neck. That didn't work out. Maybe if I do it seven times real fast, just up to my neck, that'll work out. You ever had, I, I don't, again, I don't know what your experiences were like getting to the point of praying, but, but I, I had a grand argument with God the night I got saved. He was offering me the one thing I wanted, but I, I'm here to tell you I didn't give in easily. I argued with him. For about 15, 20 minutes, I argued with God. I said, this is pointless. And he just kept saying, well, do you want a friend or not? Well, yeah, I do want a friend, but not that way. Let's do it another way. Around and around, I'm 14 years old. I'm arguing with God. I told my two sons, I said, when I was 14, I was so smart I could argue with God. Now that I'm in my 60s, I'm so dumb, I don't know what to say to him. And they laugh and they said, it took, you think it took you that long? I told them, that's enough of that conversation. But... I did. I argued with him. I can, I can understand Naaman's problem. You get down to the Jordan River and you debate because you don't really have any confidence in God. But you got to do something. So he decides maybe I'm going to do it God's way. And he starts with the first dip. No change. Second dip, no change. He's done it for the sixth time. No change. In one of those little devotionals, I, I talked about completion. Well, they talk about how the number seven is completion in the Hebrew, for the Hebrews. God didn't want Naaman to do it six times. He wanted Naaman to complete what he had told him to do. Right, right. All of it. Yeah. Well, when we got saved, every one of us ran into that same situation, didn't we? Yeah. We had to complete the process. Oh, yeah. God wasn't going to let us get by with confessing about 97% of what we had done wrong. He wanted 100%. Right. 
wasn't going to get us, let us get by with just praying until maybe we had a, a good feeling about ourselves and could get on a little bit. He wanted a transformation to take place. Yeah. Naaman is coming to the round of the point now. He's trusting God whether he knows it or not. When we pray, when we begin to seek God seriously, whether we realize it or not, we're beginning to trust God. We're beginning to give up leaning on our own understanding. We're not, we're not asking anymore about going back to other rivers or doing it some other way. We've got only one intention, and that is to do it God's way. Yes. Amen. Amen. Doesn't make any sense, but I don't care. Something has to be done. Yeah. And can you imagine when he came up the seventh time? I'm telling you, I don't know who was around, but there was going to be an awful lot of noise when he came up the seventh time and yelled at people, I'm clean. Amen. People want to know, how is it that you can trust God? How is it that you don't lean to your own understanding, but you just depend on God to help you out? I can tell you, because when we came up from the river, we came up clean. And more importantly, when we looked in the mirror every day, we were clean. Amen. I can just see Naaman, when he gets back home, he tells the people, I'm clean. Six months later, he's talking to somebody who he's met for the first time, and he holds out his hand and says, look, Amen. I'm clean. Amen. I've been that way for six months now. Let me tell you when it happened. Yeah. And I really don't know what hour it happened, but he may have told him, I was down at the Jordan River and I finally got it right at about 2.30 in the afternoon and I came up clean. Yeah. That's how I know I could trust God. Yeah. It wasn't because somebody invited me to church. It wasn't because I heard the man of God speak. It wasn't because I went down to some river. It's because when I did what God wanted, I came out clean. Amen. And I'm still clean. Amen. It's the same thing with those that have gotten saved. It wasn't because we ended up in church. It wasn't because of what the preacher said. It wasn't because we ended up at an altar praying. It's because when we stood up, we were clean, saved, transformed, not looking at the ugliness of sin in our life anymore. We were clean. And that was an exciting moment. I don't know how long Naaman lived after that. But I'm sure he's like all the rest of us. He could count the years off. I came upon the realization that this August, it's going to be 50 years for me. Still clean. Still clean. When I was a kid and I was in, in Chehalis, I had one of my buddies who swore like a drunken sailor tell me one time, Ross, you're an embarrassment. And I said, why is that? He said, because you've got such a foul mouth, I don't want to be around you. Had another one tell me one time, he said, Ross, you're an embarrassment. And I said, why is that? He said, because your temper is so lousy that it's always on display. And this was a guy that would fight anybody. But I want to tell you something. When I got clean, Amen. that went out. Amen. I tell people the first testimony I gave was a lousy one. But I was sitting next to a, another kid that wanted to fight me, and we ended up not fighting. And he says, what's wrong with you anyway? And I, we, had to, we had just exchanged names. We didn't even know each other. 
But I told him, I said, Chuck, I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. But last night, I did something weird. They got with it was at church. They call it praying. And when I prayed, something happened. I feel different. Amen. I don't want to fight you. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what happened. Amen. He looked at me and said, well, in that case, then I don't want to fight either because I don't want you to ruin it. I was clean. Amen. I don't know if Naaman gave a very good testimony his first time around either, but he had one thing I could say to him. I'm clean. Look! Amen. I woke up on Tuesday morning. I got saved on a Sunday night. I woke up Tuesday morning feeling like I did on Monday. Amen. I got something here I don't want to disturb. I was clean. Yeah. It was a little strange. It's still a little strange after 50 years. Have you ever thought about that? You're clean. Amen. You're clean. Amen. But you go around and you see people doing the same thing you used to do and you say, that's strange. Why would you do that? And then I say to myself, they're probably not strange. I'm probably the one that's strange because I'm clean. That's how I know I can trust God Amen. with all my heart. Amen. That's how I know I don't need to lean on my own understanding. Because every day I wake up, I'm clean. Amen. And if I figure if God can keep me clean, he can probably handle everything else that comes my way. Sure. The biggest, I sometimes think the biggest challenge God has is keeping us clean. But he does a good job, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Just trust him every day. Don't try to figure out how he's going to help you stay clean. That's a little confusing. You just trust him. And you go back to bed later in the day, nighttime, and you say, you know what? Still clean. Still clean. I wonder if that first night Naaman got up and checked. I don't, woke up the household. I'm clean tapped on his wife's shoulder and says, I've just been in the bathroom and looked in the mirror. I'm clean. Amen. You probably told him, roll over and go back to sleep. But I'll tell you what, it's an exciting thing, isn't it? Yeah. To be clean. Right. To be clean every day. Yeah. We just trust God, and he does it. If anybody were to tell, ask me, how do I know that I can trust God in these times? That's how. Amen. I'm clean. Still clean. Yeah. Going to stay clean. Yeah. Going to be eternally clean someday. Yeah. If I just keep trusting God. Yeah. And we're going to do that, aren't we? Yeah. Amen. Let's come and pray.